And what is medical students' most common mistake? So my opinion about what the most common mistake is. Things are not always as black and white. In the textbooks, you know, we'll say to you, okay, an MI, central chest pain, radiating to the left. Medicine is a lot of greys. So I think it's just accepting that the black and white, although it's quite common, there's still a sizable portion that don't come in that textbook fashion. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, you know, whatever like a duck, then it, then it is a duck. So most things are as they appear to, but there is an increasing portion where there's medically unexplained symptoms. Um, so that's a bit where you have to just be open-minded. What do you think your most common mistakes are? Not having fun. No, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely one. <laughs> Good. What else? Memorising a lot more than I understand. Yeah, absolutely. So we're so, so obsessed with kind of the content and the material as medical students. Like we really just want to spend all of our day in a book. What's your goal here as a medical student? Are you a medical student to pass exams? No. Why are you a medical student? To become a doctor. And we often lose sight of that as medical students. We often think that, oh, I just need to get this exam out of the way and then it will all be fine. You're not learning for the exam. You're learning for the exam as well, but you're learning for your entire future career. And often as medical students, we forget about that. We often are so stuck up in trying to remember the Krebs cycle that we forget that the reason we're learning the Krebs cycle is so that we can then diagnose and we can then understand conditions even better. And that's often forgotten. Being too concerned with academic results, something that you've hit on there is not having enough fun. Yeah, definitely. The reason why medical school is so rigorous and so challenging is because really they're trying to prepare you for a career that is really rigorous and really challenging. Um, and getting used to that now is gonna really just help you in the future. If you need pressure and you need heat and you need an intense environment, that's what makes diamonds. And often as medical students, we have that internal monologue in ourselves where we, we say, oh, you don't know anything and oh, you're forgetting too much and oh, I've studied for 12 hours, but I'm still, still failing at this. And that internal monologue is often our, our worst enemy. We're our own worst enemy and coming to grips with that and and saying well actually it's the journey that's more important than the destination I'm still going to keep revising and I'm going to be disciplined in my revision and I'm still going to keep giving it a go even when it hates me never lose sight of your goal your goal is not to pass the exam it's to become confident competent compassionate foundation doctors so my opinion about what the most common mistake is not asking for help if you don't ask for help you lose out a lot. We have all these lectures and everything. What is it about? It's about trying to give you information. If you don't understand that information, you need to ask for help. So if you don't understand, ask for help, then you go memorize stuff and say, I want to do it for the exams. Purely because you're all high achievers. Once you've done your mathematics and sciences and 100 persons and stuff, you feel asking for help is something silly, it's stupid. In medicine, nothing is a silly question and nothing is a stupid question. Be it personal questions such as, how do I cope? To how do I learn? Everything is very, very important in medicine because medicine is a wholesome thing. Because you're talking to patients, you need to talk to your colleagues, you need to have a social group, you need to learn a lot. So there is, there is important thing is to ask for help. They assume that, okay, if I ask it, I might be rejected. I might be seen as a stupid guy. No, you're not. You need to ask for help. Medical students not realizing how different medical school is a lot of the time from clinical practice. Working brings a whole different sort of chaos. When you go into a ward, you'll find that it's, it's so overwhelming. It's just chaotic, is that how I describe it? Um, there's just so much going on. There's so many demands for your attention. People um, ask you things. Um, you've got so much to try and prioritise. And it can be almost like you're in a sort of dream. Um, <laughs> it just can feel quite surreal. Very jarring to go from one day being a medical student and just cracking on trying to get through the exams to the next day, however many days later, being the doctor that's on the ward and when something happens, people are looking to you to give your contribution. And I think that can be really scary. It is really scary. <laughs> so it's important that medical students are aware of that really and that they're you know, emotionally, physically prepared for the, the demands of the job and just not too focused on medical school particularly towards the end of their course that they kind of um, are not expecting it to be exactly like it was even on the on their placements because when you're when you're working it can be quite different